Okay guys, so we've got uh, the case half cleaned up. I didn't show this, but I put new gears inside the oil pump, an internal and external gear. It's an internal gear pump. So I'll, I'll just explain to you real quick. It's just a simple internal gear pump. So this little tab will bend up on the suction tube. Bend that tab up, pop the suction tube out, and you gotta twist it and angle it out. There's a new O-ring in the kit. Put a new O-ring on the suction tube. Um, three Torx head bolts. I don't remember what size Torx head, but when you torque it back in there, 12 foot-pounds. And then the discharge tube here, you'll have to pull it off. There's a bolt here and one bolt here. And you fish it out back through here through where the auxiliary section sits. And then, of course, the reverse idler. You just pop the snarl, uh, uh, the the spiral snap ring off, and I just pushed it out that way. Just took a brass punch and knocked it out that way. And then, when you're putting this reverse idler in, there's a long hub, as you can see here, and a short hub. And the book tells you to put the long hub towards the front of the case. So this is the front of the transmission. Out here, this is the input side. So now we are ready to install counter shafts. So we're going to install the lower one first and then the upper one. And then the other thing you want to do after you get your gears pressed on, the inner race of this bearing on the forward end of the counter shafts needs to be pressed on there before you stick them in there. Okay, here we go. I'm trying to get my ducks in a row here. This reverse idler upper counter shaft is going to be here. Lower counter shaft is going to be there. Okay. And the other thing that you really need to be is count the teeth on your PTO gears. The the lower counter shaft is a 47 tooth. And the upper counter shaft is a 45 tooth. So if you didn't mark your counter shafts and you pulled them out, just count the teeth on your PTO's gears. And that's that's the only thing that's different between the counter shafts is the PTO gears. 47 tooth lower, 45 tooth upper. We're going to go ahead and stick our shaft in there. And the other thing you want to do too is find the timing I'll show you real quick while I'm holding this gear up here. There's a little zero here. Take a paint marker, mark that gear so when you so when you go back to time it. Okay, that's your timing mark. It lines up with the keyway on your shaft. Okay. my special spot here to get a hold of it at here we are okay there's the all right here we got the upper shaft this is the 45 tooth pto gear Get over there where you belong, mister. Come on. Let me get it to come forward. It's not really wanting to do it. It's hanging up on... Must be hanging up on the... It's hanging up on the oil pump. Gotta get it... Or that oil pump like that. Okay. Alright, let me spin it to where the timing marks kind of where it needs to be. Close anyway, where I know it's going to line up. Somewhere in that area, I think. Okay, and what I'm going to do... Then we're going to put our bearings in our lower counter shaft. 
And I'm going to get some wire and tie the upper counter shaft out of the way because we'll put the bearings in the lower counter shaft. And then we're going to put our drive gear in and time our, well, we'll, you know, we'll put the bearings in the lower counter shaft, put our drive gear and input in, and time the drive gear to the lower counter shaft. But we need to get the upper kind of wired up out of the way. Now, Eaton makes a special tool that supports the back of the counter shaft and centers it in the board and then you lift the front up and what you do is you put the old bearing race in here and then you basically shove it in the bore and then shove the counter shaft forward is the whole idea there we're gonna move this back some more is what we're gonna do uh, let me get some lube on this So we're going to go ahead and get another taparoonie here. And I, I think I used to just kind of manhandle them in there. And and what it'll do is the, 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 it'll shove, put the inner race in there to where it'll come out. You'll see what I'm meaning. We'll shove it off. We'll see what happens here. Oh, look out. <laughs> I'm fucking gonna shit my pants. Tube. Let me see if I can pick the back end up just a little bit. Now. Shove it the rest of the way forward if I can. I think it'll should go the rest of the way forward. There we go. That bearing is in there. Okay. Now I'm trying to think if I want to put the retainer on or go ahead and put the other bearing in it. Let me go get the other bearing off the wood in there. Alright, so here's my snap ring, my spacer. So I've got the drive gear. What you want to do is mark two adjacent two teeth, right? And then mark the two adjacent teeth across from it with paint marker. There's no marks on the on the drive gear. You just gotta count them. So now you put the drive gear in, mesh it with the lower counter shaft. I think I'm I think I'm lined up there. I'm lined up, it looks like. And then you put your snap ring, throw it in there. I need some kind of screwdriver, maybe. I'll just shove it up against that. I don't know why I didn't do that to begin with the first time, but I forgot that I was, for some reason I had it in my mind that the gear was going to slide out of there. But I forgot it'll come up against the PTO gear. I 
I'm sure some guy's got a method to this that's got it pretty well figured out. All right, so input bearing. Oh, yeah, when you get your snap ring worked in there, there's a spacer right here. I'll go in right there. Now your input bearing. I'd like to put a little bit of lube on it and free lube it. that son of a bitch worked in there okay all right so we're gonna put this front bearing retainer on here there's an oil feed hole in the retainer plate so you want to make sure that that's lined up where it's supposed to be there uh, and then you know line your gasket up with the hole right orientate it correctly and then line it up with the hole on the case the main case somebody had it siliconed on here before but all right so there's Next hole down, I'm going to decipher where my, I know if I line that one up, the feed hole is right above it. Okay, I'm going to silicone in the hole. What's the torque? Probably about 30, 35 foot-pounds there. 35 to 45 foot-pounds. Okay. All right, guys. So I got... What I'm doing now is I got, I got my main shaft in, the input shaft. All that's buttoned up. Bearing retainer. Lower counter shaft and bearings. Now I got my... Temp well, I, I got my uh, auxiliary drive gear bearing just shoved in, seated up there to where that shaft will be supported. I've got the upper reverse idler in right there. So now, this is the fun part. This is the thing that, let's put it this way. At the last, see, I started, I started in business for myself in 2013. So that was the last time that I did one of these. The first year, when I worked for the company I would work for, I used to do quite a few of these, actually. And then I went to work on my own, and then I only... The first year I was had a W900 Kenworth that I had to do a 13-speed in. That was the last one, 2013. So just bear with me. Um, I might be struggling a little bit, but there's my timing mark right there. Hopefully... Uh, let's see, what was I going to do here? I was going to try to kind of prop the shaft up here in the back. And maybe get it centered, maybe. Let me see here. Should I do that? Or maybe I can rotate that, put it in gear. Camera's kind of, I just don't have enough room for the camera and my belly and everything else here that I'm trying to get done here. Alright, so pretty much everything inside here is together. Okay, so make sure on these. Now if you if you get if you get out of time a tooth, you'll you'll know it. If it even turns when you're done, most of the ones that I've seen won't even turn. If they do turn, they're really hard to turn. See how freely this one turns? That's how you know when you're in time. And then you should be able to slide these clutch collars. 
Why is that doing that all of a sudden? Do I oh, that's why. Because there's another... There's one in gear already. Uh-oh, that's not good. So go ahead and check and make sure each one of these... That's direct. This is overdrive. Okay, and then this is going to be... Uh, second. Ow. And this will be first. Actually, no, I'm wrong on that. This would be first. Second. This would be... What the hell am I thinking here? Reversed, first. Actually, no, this is reverse low, first, second. And then this is third, and this is overdrive, okay? So, I'm wrong. It's a 13 speed. It's got low. This is this is first right here. The next one behind it is, is low. And that's going to be low there. And this is reverse. See how the... This gear is turning the opposite direction. It's locking it basically to the shaft, though, is what it's doing. Alright, so we got the bell housing all shined up there pressure washed off so let's install it still crap running out of the holes and stuff on it but... By the way, I mean, you gotta stick your, you can tell that, put the oil tube in it. Look up the torques of these. Okay, range synchronizer, and also also on this on this. So bearing here, as you can see, here's all the bearings. I don't mess around with these. I take the torch, and I cut the race off, and then I I scarf that inner race off there, and just real easy with the torch. And you can see the metal, you can see the metal, you know, blow away, and then you can see the inner part of the shaft, and you. If you if you get good enough with the torch, you won't even nick that inner shaft, and and then you just take a chisel, and bang, knock them off. There, it takes about ten seconds. I mean, it doesn't take long at all. It it way it, <coughs> it's way better than sitting there dicking around with a 
a um, knife edge bearing puller and all that bullshit. So anyways, this bearing here, just take this gear, put it in the press, come up against this back side of the face of the gear here, and then press this. You got a spacer here, but uh, press this bearing off. And then the new one, I just take, ah, son of a bitch. Uh, uh, the new one, I just take my air hammer with a chisel and I just gently pull the trigger and it just shoves her right on there. It's like nothing. Or you can, if you're OCD, you can go get a heater and all that shit or whatever you want to do. Anyway, so, uh, range synchronizer. I've fought these things before. So here's all the old guts over here. I might have to read up on, you gotta kind of hold your mouth just right. It takes kind of an art to get these things to pop in. Put your springs in here in these little recesses. And basically what you're gonna be doing when you put the hub on, you're trying to pop it all together. So here's the hub right here. that goes yeah it goes like that but I need to shove these back in as far as I can okay I think that's right. Uh, I might have to double check that. Let's read the book, guys. Right here it tells you. Okay, so assembly. On the bench with on the bench, place the larger, low range synchronizer ring face down with pins up. Okay, is that what I did? No. I did not do that. At least I can lay that without it falling off the bench. So I did not do that. So this is the low range, the larger one here. So I'll just do like the book says. With sliding clutch recess side up. Place the sliding clutch on the low range synchronizer pins. Okay, and it looks like to me that they're on the non-chamfered pins. Okay. But I don't think the other ones will fit. No. No, you can't put it on that way, so. All right. In the high range synchronizer boards, install the three springs. We've already done that. Place the high range synchronizer ring over the low range synchronizer ring. Rotate the high range synchronizer ring until the springs are seated against the pins. Cover assembly with shop rag. Apply downward pressure to the high range synchronizer while synchronizer ring while twisting counterclockwise. This pro compresses the springs to fully seat high range and low range synchronizer. This should be done with a rapid twist and push motion. Okay. Yeah, I hate doing these. I've fought these things before, man. Then you get some other guy, and he'll go, bang, just knock it right in. You're like, you bastard. <laughs> so those are obviously going to go into those holes, and these are just going to go against the pins. And see, I've got the springs against the pins now. So what i got to do is go counterclockwise with it and push down and compress the springs back into the boards and then it would line up the pins with the holes. And the problem is, is one piece is wanting to move on me. <laughs> Damn, I wish I could hold that other piece steel. See, that's what happens right there. 
it helps when you're a bigger guy and that's such a damn I don't have enough lead in my ass for one thing and Yeah, there goes one spring. I almost... Oh, you son of a bitch. I can't do the whole shop towel thing because I can't see what I'm doing. Let me find the spring. Son of a bitch. Luckily, I ordered a synchronizer range kit. So the synchronizer itself came with three new springs and the kit, the K3342 kit, came with springs. So I guess we'll try her again, see if we don't lose these. Damn it. I'll tell you what, trying to do this is a real pain in the ass. Okay. Just ain't got enough lead in my ass, you know? I wonder if there's a way. It would be pretty simple if you could hold that inner one somehow. I don't know if a guy could C-clamp that to the bench or... I guess I could try to put the rag on, but then I can't even tell what the fuck I'm doing, so. <sighs> I got to be able to hold that inside when steel. I'm going to try to, I'm going to try a C clamp and try to hold this clamp her down right here and if it'll hold that i can twist it and pop it on there okay guys i know i i didn't know if it was going to work i just what i did is i took it and i put it on the floor where i could really push down on it and and i just quickly and it just popped right on there so that's what i did so that's together that's the range synchronizer be careful not to pull up on it or all that shit will yeah, there it goes. Goes Dave, and that that's that ISX and that really nice Peterbilt that we did an outer frame rebuild on. Okay, so the range synchronizer is done. What's next? Oh, and I forgot to say, when you do one of these, make sure that you can move it back and forth from high to low. Okay. Uh, sometimes I wish I could specialize in something and do the same thing twice within a shorter period of time and remember things instead of just, you know, basically we're installing the aqua whining. So it tells you how to do what I just did there. Uh, I submerge. They tell you to submerge. There's friction material here, here, and then outside where it goes into this gear. So then it tells you to install the splitter gear, which is this gear. And I need to lock type this. They tell you to lock tight it, but it's got a roll pin. It's got a key. Well, it's got a keeper right there. And I haven't cleaned this gear up yet, so I guess I better go do that. Okay, here's our splitter gear. Okay. So, I get some Loctite. I got some here somewhere. Shaft in the vise to torque it down. Damn, am I out? No, I was going to say there should be plenty in there. Lock tight. Let's 
so it's all the splitter gear, so the splitter gear retainer, 15 16 10 cap screw, 190 to 210 foot pounds. <laughs> All right, I gotta get this torqued. Okay, so I got, you got two timing marks here on these two teeth, and I marked a tooth here and a tooth here. Uh, so tw basically it's 28. I got 27 teeth on each side of each tooth, so it should be centered. Uh, you'll know, because if you put it on there, it won't turn. So I got the rain cylinder, says offset side facing down so now we're going to get the auxiliary section and see if it'll sit on top of there see if i can knock the whole damn thing over and make a mess <clears throat> okay well, there she be Alright. So uh, make sure the output shaft bearing spacer is on the output shaft. It's on there, okay. Heat the rear output bearing cone and install the bearing cone tapered side down on the shaft. This is a new gasket on the rear bearing cover mounting surface. Oh, okay, well, I gotta clean that up still. Let's get the bearing. It is right here. And I should probably. I gotta go pre lube this bearing. It'll go on like this. And then get, a, get some lube. Alright guys, well, let's put the auxiliary section on. I just double checked to make sure my snap ring was in my auxiliary drive gear. And, uh, torque these down 35 foot pounds. Snap rings are on the counter shafts. Look like they're seated up good. Okay, well, here we go. I took the beat the dowels out of it and then it went right together. Dowels are pulling everything up.
started. Put a couple bolts in it, pull the straps off. Pulling the damn bolts out of there for the sleeve valve. Yeah, we'll get like four in it, suck it down, and shouldn't really have to change much as far as shimming goes. Didn't change any shafts. I'm going to put bearings on there unless the tolerances are way off on the bearings, which is very possible, I guess. like to see that suck down though. Is it hung on the dowels or what the hell's going on? I don't like that. It's like it should be sitting down flush. Something just doesn't seem to be right. A little gap back here just a little bit. What the hell's going on to that? And if I Straps off. See if that relaxes everything a little bit, maybe. Yeah, that made her sit right down. Okay. Note to self. Oh, yeah, I just start sucking shit down and break the case, you know. That would really make you feel good. Well, I guess if the back end don't turn, then we got it out of time, but it appears that it's turning. I need to... I think I'm in two gears at once here. Yeah, I'm in two gears. All right, guys, I'm just air checking my uh, range cylinder. Right here, I got the two hoses off. So I think I'm in low right now. We're gonna go to high. Okay, should lock up and the auxiliary section should turn. Okay. Let's go. Okay. Let's go to low range. I think it's low, yeah, it's low range here. Let's go to first, low range. Let's go to reverse. 
easy to turn because we're in low range. Let's go to high range. There's high range reverse. It'll get harder to turn as the gears get higher. It'll get easier to turn if you turn it from the output, if you're in a higher gear, but if you're from the input, depends on what end you're on. There's, there's fourth and high, let's go to low. A lot easier in low, okay. That's low range. Split. Will it not do anything through here? Because there's no supply here. I bet it won't do anything here because there's no supply here. The supply's coming from the regulator. It comes in. I bet it won't do nothing because there's no supply. Well, it's about 6 o'clock. I don't see why it wouldn't work, but I'm going to make sure. Uh, tomorrow morning, I'm going to come down here early and make sure that this range I know the range works fine and uh, I'm almost done with it so I'm gonna make sure the splitter works and we'll put the rest of the auxiliary section bolts in torque them down and we'll put the uh, the pre-select lockout pin in it and the slave valve and then put the shift bar housing on it put it back in the truck <laughs> 